So welcome back to Living on the Ice. Today, it's all about a lift bed and a lift couch. And you might ask yourself, really, why do you need both? Well, the straight answer is, I had a toy hauler before, and it had a dinette set up. And I got really tired of flip-flopping from dinette mode to, couch, to bed mode, if you will. And when you're tired at night, it's really the last thing you want to do is wrangle a big couch or, and table to try and go to bed. So that's where I really didn't want to compromise on building my new shack. And I wanted something that had a real bed in it. And I wanted something that was a couch that was comfortable. While you're fishing with a dinette set up, it's pretty difficult to get out in a hurry to try and grab that fish. And that's where I really wanted a couch, so you can hop right up, grab that fish. And plus, couches are a lot more comfortable in my opinion. Now, they might not be great for playing card games and socializing as much as a dinette is. That's where the advantage of the dinette is, I will agree. But in this shack, I really decided that this is a setup I want. So, and how do I make a couch happen? Well, it's got to lift up with the toy hauler. So... That's why I built the lift bed, the lift couch combo. And I'm really happy with it so far. Uh, I gotta have a little bit of fine tuning to do. I will tell you some of the mistakes that I made. So I'd say mistake number one is probably my motor choice. Long time ago, I modeled this lift couch and lift bed off of a previous guy's lift bed setup. And I got motors that were really under undersized. I doubled them up, but it really wasn't enough power. So what would happen was, is when I raised the bed, it would actually back drive the motors about a foot. And I knew without a mattress and the plywood up top, that really wasn't gonna cut what I needed to accomplish. So I tore those motors out and I ordered up some tarp motors. And so these are, a. a basically a truck tarp motor. Uh, they're pretty powerful. You can get different combinations of them. Uh, what I'd recommend is you can probably get by with a 600 watt tarp motor. That's what I have. Uh, there are 800 and I'm sure there's even bigger ones out there. There are 900 I think I saw too. So the other recommendation on a tarp motor that I'd recommend is get one with a, with a higher gear ratio so you're not going very fast. The speed of these things can get pretty fast. So I believe I have a 60 to one gear ratio on this and it's a 600 water. So if you're looking to duplicate this, I would definitely look at those specs when you're ordering it. So you can find them on Amazon, eBay, or if you want, just give me a shout out on the video down below and I'll send you a link of where I got it. So on to problem number two. Problem number two is I had straps in this thing. And the reason why I went to straps is I wanted to avoid what others have done with steel cables. And, and what the problem there is, is steel cables, when you wrap it around a shaft and you get it really wound really tight, if you give it any slack, those things just kind of explode once you give it slack. They don't, the windings don't stay put. And that's why I wanted to go with the strap setup. Well, the one flaw that I had with the strap setup is they'd want to walk back and forth within the channel and then they'd actually push outside the channel and get stuck um, between my roller fair leads and the actual channel. I didn't want to cut those straps by accident and have a complete failure in the thing drop on me. So I realized that I could probably make it work. I even tried doing some inner inner fair leads to try and guide the strap but what happened with that is is they would just want to roll over on me so I know I could probably make them work but how long do you spend trying to do it and is it worth it so what I ended up doing is tearing those out again and I went to ATV winch cable so it's called also called Dyneema so right now they're working pretty good I do have a little bit of winding issues. I think I'm gonna change the diameter of these to try and get a little bit more even winding, and I'll talk about that later in the video. But with that said, 
we're going to jump back. I'm going to show you how I constructed this bed, and I'm going to show you the inner workings of it. And at the end, I'm going to show you all how it works. So stay tuned. Going over the design of the bed, I will show you how I constructed it. So the main runners, if you will, or support structures are actually, so this is a quarter inch uh, plywood underlayment. Uh, the reason I like to use this, it's like a, um, a three to four layer uh, plywood and it's usually pretty void free. So, and they're also pretty consistent in the thickness because they're an underlayment. They have moisture rated glue in them. So that's the outside. And then on the inside here, I have like an inch and an eighth um, select pine that actually um, is basically, these are kind of modeled off after uh, a wood airplane spar. And so, Basically the same thing as a C channel, if you will, a metal C channel. So they're very strong in the vertical loading, but um, they're prone to twisting. So that's why I have a lot of bracing throughout the whole bed. Uh, the end caps, if you will, these are nothing more than a two by six that I cut out. And on the inside here, you can kind of see it but they're actually a, um, a winch fair lead. So I took out, normally they have bottom and top rollers and, or sorry, top and bottom and side to side rollers. So on the wall side, I actually have two horizontal rollers and inside here I have the vertical rollers. So I'm, I, and that helped me cut down on the thickness I needed between the bed and the wall and it also allowed me to narrow it, narrow this up without adding any more thickness here. So it worked out moving these inside. These are just 3D printed brackets. So there's not a ton of side load on it. So I think they'll work pretty good. But as far as construction, I just use some um, two by two by fours or two by stock and cut it down to about two by three. And then I just screwed it together and then kind of crossed or toenail screwed into each block there, helping support it. So, and the bottom, the bottom is just a, a quarter inch plywood as well. Same stuff. So that's kind of the construction. Uh, I did go to a regular two by six material here because I had to do a full notch out here to allow the the wires to wind up correctly without interfering and rubbing. So, and then I figured it'd be a good thing to help support support the motor load and twisting moment of those motors. So, so. These two pieces that are on either side of the motor, both front and back, those are two by six. The rest of them are these, I, you can call them spars if you want. Everything else is this. So probably the overall weight of everything combined right now, I would say my bed frame with the motors are probably pushing about 100 pounds and then the mattress is like another, I believe it's 47 pounds. So roughly 150 pounds, I would guesstimate on the weight of it. Uh, the couch itself, I believe the couch is probably, hmm, it's probably in the neighborhood of 35 pounds. It's, it's fairly light. Um, and I just made that, the frame out of two by material. I just threw it together for a trip. I will probably end up replacing it with aluminum down the road. Um, to give me a little bit more, it'll take some of the bulkiness out of it and make it a little bit lighter weight. But I don't think it's overly heavy. I probably wouldn't gain actually a whole lot by going to aluminum, just other than making it look a little nicer. So Back up a little bit. 
as you can see, I got four rails up here and I have a strap on each going to my bed. And so the primary way to the bed and everything, um, well, going up and down will be on those four straps. And then <clears throat> the bed will, at, or the, sorry, the couch will actually be attached to the bed. Uh, it won't be attached to the rails, just the bed. Um, so this is uh, the motor I got. I did have some other motors and I'll show you in, in size comparison. Um, that's the first motor I started out with, with two of those on each side. Before I went too far with them, I had ended up upgrading. And I got these, these are a, a tarp motor. They're, I, think, I wanna say they're half a horsepower or maybe a third horsepower. They're like 600 watts basically. So they pull up, up to 50 amps of current. So <laughs> they, they really do suck a lot of juice. So it was a good thing when I planned ahead, I actually um, ran a six gauge wires to this thing. And it's really good because I got plenty of capacity there. Um, obviously th these aren't six gauge going to this motor, but my main feed to the system is a six gauge. As you can see, I got these shafts aligned really easy, just spinning it with my fingertips. Um, I actually have a garage door bearing right there. These are these are a one inch aluminum shaft, eighth inch wall. So we end up with a three quarter inch inside diameter. You can kind of see right there, see the shaft. And these motor, tarp motors by chance, actually have a three quarter inch shaft. <laughs> so it really works out awesome. Uh, the other motors I had, I had to machine some some adapters and stuff like that. And going this route worked really easy. And and actually these these aluminum shafts were about the same price as a steel garage door shaft. So it's like why not? Plus I save a little bit of weight, not a ton. Anyway, back to back to wrapping on there. This is what it looks like once it's all connected up. So you can see I got that r little red collar in there. There's a the shaft and and the strap is over wrapped. And I mean, this thing's tight. So right here, these are uh, uh, another 3D printed, um, basically a bushing or a bearing, if you will. Um, the good thing is there's not a there shouldn't be a ton of load on this because each of these straps are posing each other. So this is really just to keep things in alignment, not necessarily to take a huge load. I'll have another motor right there. And this shaft actually is this one's for the couch and this one's for the bed. What I have set up for wiring is a small fuse panel and what that fuse panel is going to feed is <clears throat> it actually feeds some lights that will be in the bed it will feed um the switches that i have going on in the bed or that control the contactors so what i have there is two winch contactors and they control each motor um, feeding it i have six gauge wire coming up to it and six gauge wire feeding each of the contactors. Now contactor is like a big relay, if you will. It'll take uh, very large uh, DC loads or, or AC loads, large current loads. And coming off of that for the bed, and I might've covered this, I have eight gauge wire on the bed motor and for the sofa or couch motor, I actually have 10, 10 gauge wire going to that one, being that there's not near the load, uh, we're not carrying near the weight 
of it. Um, if I have an issue, I can always upgrade that wiring. Not a big deal. I just ran out of wiring. So that's, that's the reason why we did that. I also have some lights. I have a little uh, pulse width modulation dimmer set up right now. And that's feeding this breakout box. From that breakout box right now, I have four lights underneath set up underneath. I'll probably add some more. I was just trying to see how I like it with four. It's not bad, but I think, uh, you know, if I'm tying some lures or something like that, I'm going to want a little bit more light. So the nice thing is you can turn this down with the pulse width modulation dimmer. You can get it down pretty dim. So uh, that's one nice feature. So we're going to roll right into issues I had and where we're at now. I had straps and what I found is, is when the straps would roll or when the straps would come in at this spot, what would happen is, is they would want to shift side to side here. And I had, I made these rollers, they're actually wider than they are right now to try and guide the strap. But what would happen is it would try to roll over right here to keep the strap centered and so I ended up calling no joy just because I was in a time crunch and I really wanted to get this thing working. So what I went with is this is a synthetic winch cable or it's actually called Dyneema. If you want to um, buy different sizes other than like normal winch cable is either three sixteenths or a quarter inch. If you want to go smaller, um, that works that would probably work out well in a bed setup. And that's probably the direction that I'm going. Um, what I found is, is give you guys a little side view here. What happens is, is, er, let me back up. So how I have these wrapped is each side comes in, it goes through the shaft here and then I loop it around, kind of knot it by itself. And then I feed it across and just tape the end down. And then what holds it tight is it over wraps over the top of it. And that holds it pretty dang tight, pretty good. Um, the issue that I'm having now is with the travel that I want is pretty much almost a full eight feet of travel is that the winding ends up getting uneven, especially you can kind of see right here. So when the winding gets uneven, the bed will want to uh, tilt to one side or the other. And we get uneven winding. So I think my first, my next attempt, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this out to 8th inch Dyneema, which is rated for 2,500 pounds static. Um, on these winch cables, I believe are like... 8,000 pounds or they might even be 12,000 pounds something it's an astronomical number <laughs> this this stuff is very very cool and and the the weight and load that it can take is just amazing so and one really cool thing about these is you can actually tie your own eyelets so I tied all the all the eyelets going to these or they call it a splice, I believe. I could be wrong there, but splice eye, something like that. But I ended up tying all myself all my own because it was just too cost prohibitive to go ahead and buy a bunch of fittings and such to to crimp it together, and then that adds a lot of um, a lot of bulkiness on there too, where being able to self tie it on itself um, works really well. So, and I believe they say that that these splices are rated to like ninety or ninety five percent of the the sheer strength of the rope. So, basically, a big Chinese finger trap. Now I'm sure you guys are getting sick of me talking. You want to see this thing move? All right, let me show you. When we're ready for bed, all I do is I'm gonna flip the couch down. And then if you see on the side here, I have four blocks.
that they actually sit on. They're uh, they're eighty twenty uh, corner support, or uh, I believe that's what they call it, ninety degree support. But to flip the bed, the couch, I do pinch it together, flop down like that, and then we'll lower the bed down. There's your bed. Hop up in there, good to go. What what I have here is uh, this is kind of like a memory foam mattress, uh, queen size. If I didn't say that before, uh, it's a ten inch mattress that I got off of Amazon. And then for uh, this is just a uh, just a ruler I got sitting in there. Travels nice. On top of there, all it is is. Uh, quarter inch uh, underlayment plywood for a base. You're not going to want to directly kneel right on this quarter inch. You put your knee through it. But with the dispersed weight of having a bed on there, there's no issue. I mean, I've crawled around on here and haven't heard a crack at all. So no problem there. And just in case anybody's really wondering, is this thing strong enough? Yep. No issue. I think the camera's rocking more than more than the bed. Makes no noise when you're on here. So plenty supportive, very strong. Uh, I bet you somebody could, you could probably get 1,200 pounds in here pretty easy. So in the morning when you're ready to uh, get back to fishing, done sleeping, leave pillows on there, whatever the case may be, just raise it up. After we get the bed up ready to travel, this is how we get the couch in the proper position. So flip it up, this jack nice sofa. Uh, fold it flat and then raise it up. And now that we got the couch up in position, um, we got just about just about six feet. I'm like five ten, so to ride the four wheeler. Thanks everybody for showing up, checking out my dual lift bed project. I really appreciate all the views everybody has given me, especially on my last video, my uh, mini toy hauler. Um, right now that video is blowing up. I got like 12,000 views on it, which is amazing, which is more than all, all my other videos combined. Um, I'm trying to do better and better for you to win your subscription. I'd really appreciate it. If you guys subscribe, leave a comment down below. That really, really, really helps out each each and every video. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you found something helpful in here, ingenious, or just plain like it. So, till next time, thank you very much. Get on the ice.